Hi, in today's video we're going to look at uh, C SQL Server's new feature, it's called uh, User Defined Server Rules. Now, for most DBAs, uh, one of the biggest issues, or not really one of the biggest issues, but something that's been very challenging is to assign permissions based on the role of the DBA himself. Now, while it's easy to do at the database level for application users who are uh, connecting to the database, it's always been a challenge to make sure that the DBA has just enough permissions to do their job. While uh, we've always been able to do this using the principle of least privileges for uh, database application and users, for the DBA, just because he is the administrator after all, there has not really been very clear-cut roles assigned to him. So. A typical example of this would be uh, a DBA who's maybe about two years experience is obviously going to have a different kind of skill set and job role compared to a DBA who's maybe 10 years uh, experience. So depending on the nature and the job role of the DBA himself, it was critical that we go ahead and make sure that he has just enough permissions to do his job especially because you don't want even DBAs making mistakes. While we know that users can do it, we also know that DBAs could also make mistakes. So keeping that in mind, what uh, SQL Server has provided with uh, the latest release in SQL 2012 is the ability to go ahead and create user-defined server roles. How you do that is basically if you have uh, SQL Server installed, you'll see that uh, everything looks exactly the same. However, if you right click and then choose uh, Server Roles, you have a new option saying uh, New Server Role. This didn't used to be there in SQL Server previously. So some roles that you'd see traditionally in SQL Server is uh, basically uh, roles like uh, Sysadmin, Security Admin, Server Admin, Setup Admin, Process, Disk, DB Creator, and Bulk Admin. All of these have been there for quite some time in SQL Server. So say for example now I'm going to go ahead and do L1 DBA. Now as my L1 DBA uh, I want to go ahead and make sure that he's got just enough permissions to go ahead and do his job. So I'm just going to get um, um, get him some permissions that's very specific to what uh, job role he performs. So I'm going to give him the permission to monitor uh, endpoints. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and just give him SQL default TCP IP and name pipes, right? And uh, within the server rules, if you look here now, under endpoints, I'm going to give him permission to connect. And under server rules, I'm going to give him permission to perform very basic stuff. I'm not going to give him permissions to alter a database at this point but uh, say for example I'll give him access to view any database view any definition create trace event notification just in case we need to monitor some performance issues right I'll give him permission to alter a trace as well so that's pretty much uh, what I want to give him at the moment. Uh, I can also go ahead and give him alternate credentials, assuming that he's going to be going ahead and um, performing operations like resetting passwords, things like that. So as you can see here, uh, what's happening is basically uh, you can see that the permissions that we are assigning depends on what kind of operation the DBA is expected to do. And this way we can control in much more detail exactly what that uh, DBA is going to do. So as you can see here, I haven't given him permission to shut down the database. That is something that probably uh, I'd want someone more senior to do after trying all other options because again, uptime is something that's critical. Later on, maybe once I have confidence in the DBA, I'd give him permission to alter any database so that he can change things like the recovery model or maybe uh, the initial size or do some very basic database administrative work on the database itself. So this is how you want to go ahead and use uh, server-defined roles. I can also go ahead, once the role is defined, then add members to the role. So say, for example, at this point, I've got a couple of members here. These are SQL logins. So I'm just going to go ahead and add them. So these two roles, um, members, basically, these are users uh, or logins who connect to my SQL Server instance. They are now part of the, uh, the group or the role called L1DBA. So this way I can actually go ahead and keep uh, track of who's doing what on this particular server and make sure that the DBAs themselves 
have just enough permissions to do their job. So let's go ahead and see how this looks like. So let me just reset the password here for DC user. As you can see, as soon as I tried to alter the database, I got the message saying that the user does not have permission to perform this action. So this way you can actually control what kind of activities the DBA does on this particular server. And as you can see, we can also go ahead and uh, use the same profiler, uh, use the uh, user to create a profiler trace, which is uh, one of the permissions that we've granted the user. So I'm just going to create a dummy trace file, I'm going to write trace 1 I'm going to press run and you can see that the trace is created so while I don't really have permissions to open on the database or uh, modify the database in any way I still have permissions to go ahead and create a trace on the server so this is how you want to go ahead and use uh, user-defined server roles so again it's uh, really just uh, complementing the security features available within SQL Server and making sure that um, you have a complete stack and you're able to control access and permissions not just at the developer or the uh, application level but even among database administrators themselves. I hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.